Botrytis cinerea is a necrotrophic fungal parasite, meaning that the organism kills infected host cells and consumes the dead tissue as its means of development. It is a pathogen of over 200 plant species, including many important crops, such as conifer, gerbera, raspberry, grapes, carrots, potatoes, and many others, infecting many different organs, such as flowers, leaves, fruits, roots, and even seeds in some cases, where it can lie dormant in a developing plant for several months before becoming symptomatic. It has been recently found that along with other species of Botrytis, most of which are pathogens of monocots, that there are cryptic species overlapping with the hosts of Botrytis cinerea that are similarly symptomatic, such as Botrytis californica, Botrytis pseudocinerea, and Botrytis sinoviticola. Botrytis cinerea enters the cell through a special structure called an ampersorium, secreting enzymes that degrade both the waxy outer layer and the cellular structure within. Post-entrance, Botrytis cinerea utilizes compounds such as botrytiol, botcinolide, and phytotoxic proteins in the necrotizing of plant tissues, rapidly oxidizing cells it makes contact with by inducing programmed cell death. A common method by which Botrytis cinerea infects a host is through hardened infectious tissue called sclerotia, which develop in dead tissue and can survive for long periods in debris. These structures produce conidiophores, and subsequently conidia, which infect living tissue. Conidia formation is stimulated by specific wavelengths of light, and near-ultraviolet wavelengths are used to induce sporulation in laboratories, though some populations can sporulate in darkness. A simultaneous rapid decline in humidity and an incline in temperature can cause the explosive release of conidia into the air. Conidia can move on air currents from neighboring crops, yet most conidia are generated from primary sources within the crop. Flower tissues are common points of infection and serve as holding spaces for the infection of fruit as well, and insects can vector botrytis, often through wounds or physical contact, like in the case of Bredesia genus of dark-winged fungus gnats. Botrytis scenario is difficult to control, in part because many hosts can carry the pathogen, increasing the chances of infection to crops, especially since it can survive for extended periods of time as infectious inoculum in crop debris. Finally, it has many modes of attacking the host physiology, which makes resistance breeding and certain biologically focused strategies less effective. For these reasons, any single control measure is unlikely to prevent infection in all circumstances, but an integrated approach can be effective, one which includes the management of environmental conditions, precludes entrance from the environment, and actively disincentivizes the germination of infectious material that does occur. Specific management techniques depend on the particular cultivation space and crop, but high humidity, reduced light, and moderate temperatures are conducive to growth. Botrytis scenario is highly adaptive, and its wide host range is owed to this trait, which also makes resistance breeding difficult and historically unsuccessful in many cases.